He is known for being an Indian Hindu philosopher and social reformer. He is recognized for his influential role in the Sri Vaishnavism tradition and the Bhakti movement. His name is Ramanuj. In the vast landscape of Indian philosophy, one name stands out as a beacon of knowledge and devotion, Ramanuj, also known as Ramanujacharya. Born into a society deeply rooted in the traditions of Vedanta, Ramanuja's journey took a different path than that of his guru, Yadava Prakesa. While Yadava Prakesa embraced the non-dualistic Advaita Vedanta, Ramanuj found solace in the teachings of the Tamil Alvars tradition, following in the footsteps of scholars like Nathamuni and Yaminakarya. As Ramanuj delved deeper into his studies, he became the chief proponent of the Vishishtadvaita sub-school of Vedanta, a philosophy that would leave an indelible mark on the Indian philosophical landscape. His disciples, likely authors of texts such as the Shatyanya Upanishad, further propagated his teachings. Ramanuj himself penned influential texts, including Abhasya on the Brahma Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita. Ramanuj's Vishishtadvaita philosophy stood in competition with the Dvaita philosophy of Madhvacarya and the Advaita philosophy of Adi Shankara, forming the triumvirate of influential Vedantic philosophies in the second millennium. What set Ramanuj apart was his emphasis on bhakti, the devotion to a personal god, as a means to spiritual liberation. He believed in the existence of a plurality and distinction between Atman and Brahman, while also affirming the unity of all souls and their potential to realize identity with the Divine. Ramanuja's teachings became a cornerstone of the Bhakti movement, inspiring countless individuals to seek a deeper connection with the Divine through devotion. Ramanuja's legacy as a philosopher, guru, and social reformer continues to reverberate through the ages. His profound understanding of the interconnectedness of devotion, philosophy, and spirituality has left an indelible impact on Indian culture and philosophy. The story of Ramanuj is one of courage, intellectual curiosity, and a relentless pursuit of truth, reminding us all of the power of devotion and the potential for spiritual liberation that lies within each of us. Ramanuj's philosophy offers us a unique perspective on knowledge and perception. His epistemology can be described as hyperrealistic, similar to naive empiricism. According to Ramanuj, there are three sources of knowledge, perception, inference, and the testimony of scripture, or sabda. Ramanuj emphasizes that perception and inference are trustworthy sources of knowledge, despite the inherent limitations and ignorance that humans possess. He believes that knowledge is always of the real, even in dreams, and that error arises from disordered perception or faulty inference about what truly exists. While some proponents of naive empiricism may argue that intermittent acquaintance with objects of knowledge suffices, Ramanuj disagrees. He asserts that true knowledge only occurs when there is direct perception of an object. He goes beyond traditional empiricism by not restricting knowledge solely to what can be gathered from the senses. However, Ramanuj's uniqueness lies in his view that devotion, or bhakti, is itself an epistemic state. He believes that when devotion takes firm root in an individual, it transforms into parabhakti, the highest form of devotion. Ramanuj considers bhakti to be a direct awareness of Brahman's nature, making it a kind of knowledge. In daily life, Ramanuj's epistemology can help us approach knowledge with a sense of trust in our perceptions and inferences. It reminds us to be mindful of our own limitations and biases, while also recognizing the significance of devotion in the pursuit of true understanding. Ramanuj's philosophy encourages us to seek knowledge not only through the senses but also through spiritual devotion, allowing us to embrace a more holistic and profound perspective on the nature of reality. Ramanuj, a great philosopher of ancient times, believed that the greatest good in life lies in understanding our true nature and the true nature of Brahman. He saw spiritual liberation, known as moksha, as the ultimate joy that comes from contemplating Brahman. This joy is not attainable through mere theoretical knowledge, but through devotion, worship, and contemplation of the divine perfection. Ramanuj emphasized that knowing the character of Brahman is crucial for attaining liberation. He understood that theoretical knowledge alone is not enough to free us from the cycle of rebirths. Instead, he introduced the concept of bhakti yoga, which emphasizes the discipline of devotion and worship. According to him, liberation is not about separating ourselves from transmigration, but rather finding joy in contemplating the divine perfection. To achieve this joy, Ramanuj advocated for a life of exclusive devotion to Brahman. This involves singing praises, performing adulatory acts in temples and private worship, and constantly dwelling on Brahman's perfections. In return for this devotion, Brahman bestows his grace upon the devotee, assisting them in attaining release from the cycle of rebirths. Ramanuj's philosophy offers us a valuable lesson in dealing with daily life. By understanding our true nature and the nature of divinity, we can find joy and liberation. Through devotion and worship, we can cultivate a deeper connection with the Divine and experience the grace that helps us overcome the challenges we face in life. 
Ramanuj, a renowned philosopher of his time, found himself deeply engaged in a philosophical debate with his contemporary, Shankara. At the heart of their disagreement lay the interpretation of the Upanishads, ancient texts that delve into the nature of reality and divinity. Ramanuj firmly believed that Shankara's understanding of these texts was flawed, and he set out to present his arguments against it. One of Ramanuj's main objections was centered around the concept of Brahman, the ultimate reality. While Shankara argued that Brahman was undifferentiated consciousness, Ramanuj vehemently disagreed. He contended that Brahman was, in fact, differentiated consciousness. For Ramanuj, this distinction was crucial in understanding the true nature of divinity. Furthermore, Ramanuj took issue with Shankara's concept of Nirguna Brahman, which he considered incorrect and untenable. According to Shankara, Nirguna Brahman was Brahman devoid of any attributes or qualities. Ramanuj, however, saw it differently. He believed that Brahman possessed divine attributes and qualities, thus making it a more relatable and accessible concept for human understanding. Additionally, Ramanuj challenged Shankara's notion of avidya, the state of ignorance that veils one's true nature. Shankara proposed that avidya was a result of superimposition, where one mistakenly attributes qualities to oneself that do not exist. Ramanuj disagreed, arguing that avidya was caused by beginningless karma, the accumulated actions and consequences from past lives. Finally, Ramanuj outright rejected Shankara's doctrine of avidya and maya, citing seven major flaws and inconsistencies within it. He believed that these concepts failed to provide a comprehensive understanding of the human experience and the nature of reality. Ramanuja's criticism of Shankara's philosophy was not merely an intellectual exercise, it had profound implications for daily life. His alternative interpretation of the Upanishads emphasized the importance of recognizing the individual's connection to the divine and the inherent qualities within each person. By acknowledging the differentiated consciousness of Brahman and understanding the role of karma in avidya, Ramanuj offered a framework for personal growth and self-realization. In his quest to redefine the interpretation of the Upanishads, Ramanuj stood as a protagonist challenging the prevailing philosophy of his time. Through his objections and counterarguments, he sought to deepen our understanding of divinity and its relevance in our daily lives. Ramanuj, a renowned philosopher, firmly believed in the reliability of the Vedas as a source of knowledge. However, he criticized other schools of Hindu philosophy, particularly Advaita Vedanta, for their failure to interpret all of the Vedic texts accurately. In his work, Sri Bhashya, Ramanuj pointed out that these philosophers selectively interpreted Upanishadic passages that supported their monistic interpretation while ignoring those that supported pluralism. According to Ramanuj, it was essential to consider the entire scripture as a whole, without giving preference to one part over another. He argued against the practice of interpreting isolated portions of any scripture. Instead, Ramanuj emphasized the need to view the scripture as an integrated corpus expressing a consistent doctrine. He believed that the Vedic literature contained references to both plurality and oneness, suggesting that the truth must incorporate both pluralism and monism, leading to the concept of qualified monism. This approach to scripture interpretation set Ramanuj apart from Adi Shankara, another prominent philosopher. Shankara's method, known as Samanvayat Tatparya Linga with Anvayavayadarika, advocated examining all texts in their entirety and establishing their intent through six characteristics. Shankara argued that not every aspect of a text held equal weight and that some ideas were the essence of an expert's testimony. These differing approaches to scriptural studies led Shankara to conclude that the principal Upanishads primarily teach monism, exemplified by teachings like Tattvam Aci. On the other hand, Ramanuja's philosophy emphasized that qualified monism formed the foundation of Hindu spirituality, incorporating both pluralistic and monistic elements. Ramanuja's hermeneutic criticism of Ramanuja's philosophy brings attention to the importance of interpreting texts holistically and considering the entirety of their message. It teaches us the value of seeking a comprehensive understanding rather than selectively choosing passages that align with preconceived notions. Applying this approach to daily life can help us approach various sources of knowledge, including religious texts, with an open mind and a willingness to explore different perspectives. Ramanuj, a great philosopher of the Vedanta tradition, embarked on a quest to understand the nature of divinity and its implications for human existence. He found himself confronted with various schools of thought, each offering a unique perspective on the relationship between the individual soul, jiva, and the ultimate reality, Brahman. One such school was Madhvacarya's Dvaita, which emphasized the distinction between Jiva and Brahman that could never be transcended. According to Madhvacarya and Ramanuj, God Vishnu stood as the independent and supreme entity, while all other gods and beings depended on him. However, Ramanuj presented a nuanced view called, Qualified Non-Dualism, asserting that souls shared the same essential nature as Brahman. 
He believed that every soul had the potential to achieve the blissful state of God himself. While Madhvacarya advocated for both qualitative and quantitative pluralism of souls, Ramanuj proposed a different perspective. He espoused qualitative monism and quantitative pluralism of souls, as explained by Sharma. In Ramanuja's philosophy, there existed a universal sameness in the quality and degree of bliss attainable for human souls. This meant that every individual had the potential to reach the divine state of God. Ramanuja's philosophy diverged from Shankara's Advaita school, another non-dualistic Vedanta school. Shankara believed that only Brahman and its causes constituted the metaphysical unchanging reality, while the empirical world and its observed effects were illusory and transient. Spiritual liberation, according to Shankara, involved realizing the oneness of one's unchanging self, Atman, with the Nirguna Brahman. In contrast, Ramanuj posited that both Brahman and the material world were distinct absolutes, both metaphysically real. He rejected the notion of labeling the world as false or illusory. For Ramanuj, God encompassed both soul and body, and the material world represented the divine glory. He emphasized devotion to godliness and constant remembrance of the beauty and love of a personal God as the path to Brahman. In a world where the quest for meaning and understanding remains a constant struggle, Ramanuja's philosophy offers valuable insights. It reminds us that we all share a fundamental connection with the divine and have the potential to experience profound bliss. Ramanuja's emphasis on devotion and the recognition of the divine presence in our everyday lives can guide us in finding solace and purpose. His philosophy invites us to cultivate a deep sense of reverence, reminding us that our pursuit of spiritual fulfillment lies in embracing the beauty and love that permeate the world around us. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.